I was a little frustrated with the industry. The art industry is its own uh, can of worms. <laughs> but I also realized that in school, I didn't think that I was smart enough to be a scientist. And then I realized I can still work in science by supporting scientists instead of doing the actual science myself. And so that was what really drove me to do that. And to also explore my capabilities in a precision capacity, I can be very like detail focused. And so scientific glass blowing really touched me in that way where I can really focus on the nitty gritty and the details and make things like very nice. And so that was really exciting for me. I run all of the quartz manufacturing, the research and development, internal consultation and design with the engineering department and the various scientific sides of the company. And it also depends on the time of the year and the time of the cycle of where we are in terms of building a machine, running a machine, or decommissioning and setting up for a new machine. So I have three scientific glass blowers, Cameron, Matt, and Caden. All amazing talent, all varied skill sets. Some of our glass blowers are much better at cold working and machining and grinding. Some of our glass blowers are much better at welding and doing more solid type work. And then some of our glass blowers are amazing at fine detail and hollow work uh, and precision work as well. We all bring a lot of different skill sets to the table and we all um, get to collaborate a lot and learn from each other, which I really enjoy. There is a, a material scientist who wrote this book. I don't remember his name, so you have to look it up, but it's called Stuff Matters. And what he says about glass is that Glass allows us to transcend our scale from the glass that's in microscopes to the glass that's in telescopes. We can look beyond time, right? If you think about a telescope letting you see into the past. Since we can look through glass, we forget about it. Its biggest feature is also kind of its, its downfall. It enables the technology in your phone. It enables the windows in your car, in your house. It adds this environmental protection for our plasma and for the magnets outside of our plasma. It also allows high optical capability cameras to capture images inside. And therefore, we forget its existence. It's been really interesting to see the progression of our industry through these technological material changes. With the development and wide use of quartz, we now have extreme temperature capabilities. We have extreme optical capabilities in the way that borosilicate didn't offer. We really love that about it because we can shoot that super hot plasma and then the outside of the vessel isn't really changing temperature that much. However, as we move up to larger machines, all of those properties are kind of changing. And so we have yet to see what is going to happen and where that is going to lead us. In my mind, quartz will always be the winner, but uh, there are also other things that we're gonna have to like take into consideration to see um, how those play out.